So every day we bathe in the ocean of nectar. So much, so nice. Just like every day in the, in the Gita Mahatma, it says that just like we take the bath in the Ganges and get cleansed of all our sins, so every day we should take bath, bath in the Bhagavad Gita and be cleansed of all our, of all our sins also. Not everybody can take a bath in the, in the Ganges every day, but the Bhagavad Gita, the text you can take. So we, we bathe in the ocean of Radharani's glories. That's the... Is there anything more greater or more wonderful than that? This is the... We Vaishnavas are proud people because we think that we've got the best thing. Uh, other people can make, uh, other people can believe whatever they like, you know, the, like uh, Madhavendra Puri's verse, you know, the Mugdham Man Nigadanta Niti You know this verse? The one? It's one of the few verses that we have left that are written by Madhavendra Puri. It's in the Padyavali. He says, let the, let the, let the, you know, he, and he mentions all the different kinds of people. Let the people who are argumentative, let they call me foolish. You know, let the people, let the people who are doing, you know, sacrifices and so on, let them call me, you know, the, uh, uh, out, uh, proud. Not except, you know, other people, my family members, they may call me, you know, uh, mad. But I don't care. My mind does not move one inch from the lotus feet of uh, Govinda. Govinda, not one inch. So in, in the end, actually, Today I was talking with one person. He was saying how uh, he gets angry when people when he's dis arguing with someone about Siddhanta. He says he can't help it. He gets angry because everybody is using such you know false and uh, argumentation. Nobody really wants to know the truth. You know, false argument. Everybody is using false argumentation, or they may be very clever to uh, uh, are, are, you know very clever. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it says there's no point. Tarka, Shushka Tarka, it says that there's always going to be someone who has a better argument than you. You know, someone who's a better, who has, you know, better knowledge of Tarka, of arguing techniques and so on. So if you get involved, if you think that it's only, that Siddhanta is the important thing, uh, if you think that Siddhanta is the only important thing, uh, then you're going to get in trouble, because Bhakti is not based on Siddhanta. Bhakti, in Bhakti, the Siddhanta follows the Rasa. The Rasa doesn't follow the Siddhanta. It's not that you have the right Siddhanta and then you have the Rasa. You have the Rasa first and that reveals the Siddhanta to you. And then when you have the Siddhanta, then, then that, 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 what that does, does it, it, it nourishes your experience of the Rasa. But in actual fact, just like all this now we're reading about Vaibhav, so the subject is, the subject is as we've been saying, is Radha's Aishwarya. So here, you know, the, if you look at these arguments that they are given, they're using scriptural arguments, saying, you know, that Brahma says like this about uh, trying to get the dust of lotus feet, and then Lakshmi Devi, she's trying to get the dust of Radha's lotus feet, and then Krishna is trying to get the dust of Radha's lotus feet, and so the dust of Radha's lotus feet is the best of all. Yeah? But actually, this is not Siddhanta. This is this is this is uh, just this is rasa. Because what we're doing is we we're entering into a world where all these where all these characters exist, and then we're using those characters to, to, to prove to us that Radharani is the best. But in actual fact, what we're saying, if you can you can you can take it another way, you can say that love is the best thing, and it's a way of saying that love is the best thing, and that, and that you know. If you're going to say love is the best thing, then you have to approach it a bit differently. So we as modern people, we as modern people, we, we enjoy this, but at the same time, if we're going to enter into logical discussion, then we have to be able to show how, how the, the goal of spiritual life is prem. That prem is the preogen, that the ultimate goal of spiritual life is, is prem, is love. And that our, and it not just not just some, uh, you know, abstract love, a genuine emotional experience of love, that this is actually where God is manifest and where we can experience God. 
uh, in, in the most intense fashion. So, you know, the, so our argumentation might, in, in the modern world, has to take a different, like Prabhupada used to say, uh, that you're putting old wine into new bottles. Right? You've heard this expression before? You take old wine and you put it into new bottles. So what does that mean for us? You know, in the modern world, for instance, you can't come and say, well, it says in the Bhagavatam, who cares? In the modern world, nobody cares what the Bhagavatam says. First, you have to somehow or another establish the authority of the Bhagavatam. So some people might be susceptible, and you might say to someone, uh, the Bhagavatam is a great scripture, we accept it as our authority, and, uh, you know, many other people have accepted it as an authority, and, uh, you know, Jiva Goswami says, this is why the Bhagavatam, we accept the Bhagavatam, because why does he accept the Bhagavatam? Well, he's saying, he's taking the argument from the Garuda Purana and from the other Puranas that say that the, Mahab that the Bhagavatam is the best of the Puranas and is the greatest authority. He's saying the Bhagavatam itself is saying, Sarva Vedanta Saram Hi. And so, uh, you know, the, it's the essence of all the Vedantas. Nigama Kalpa Galitan Falam. These things are in the Bhagavatam itself. So from the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam is saying it's the most authoritative scripture. And then the other, and some other te texts are also saying it's the most authoritative scripture. And some saints are saying it's the most authoritative scripture. But that's all... If I don't accept it as authoritative scripture, these, these arguments have no meaning for me. Right? This is why authority also has no fundamental basis in, uh, in argumentation. In some respects, it does, what, that is why a Vaishnava is the most important thing. Because what happens when you meet a Vaishnava, when you meet an advanced Vaishnava, when you meet a Rasika Vaishnava, a Bhavuk Vaishnava, then it's not simply the... It's, it, it, then he becomes an authority and his character becomes the authority. So the character of the person is the authority. It's not the. It, 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 it's nothing else. And, in, and and of course, the main authority is experience. The main authority is experience. There's no higher authority than your own experience. I can say anything, but if it doesn't if it doesn't have any relationship to your experience, you're going to just say, "Well, it doesn't mean anything to me," right? Or if you and, and if you if you practice uh, bhakti yoga and you don't get any experience from it, you don't get any benefit from it, you don't get any, you know, nothing, nothing happens to you, you don't feel any joy, you don't feel any enthusiasm, uh, for whatever reason, that's your experience. And so that experience is what's going to make the difference. Now, mostly for us, like the, yes, yesterday and the last couple of days, actually we've been talking about praying and on the different level, this, this Vishwanath Chakravarti's division of Anu, Mahan, Parama Mahan, and uh, Apechik, Lagu. So the, uh, that uh, there's a, the, the, these distinctions, but saying that Prem is there, in all, e even in the sadhaka. So that means that he has some experience of Prem. That he's experienced something of Prem. He's experienced something of the relationship with the Supreme Truth, Radha and Krishna. And that has reflected in his heart, or in her heart. And so she has some, there's some, some contact there some experience there of the truth. And from that, you know, the rest starts to make, make sense and starts to make meaning. Well, we can take also, you know, but the thing is that if we, so, so Tarka, Siddhanta, argument in itself, it can only, it usually only is effective to the extent that you have some experience that will make the argument meaningful. Oh, well, you know, it doesn't mean that a person who's not a devotee has no experience that will be anukul or be complementary to the experience of bhakti. For instance, right away we have theism. So people, some people, a lot of people believe in God, naturally believe in God, they have some idea of God. So once someone has an idea of God, then we've kind of got them in our, in our grip in a, in a certain sense. Because then we can talk about Aishwarya and Madhurya, we can talk about levels of God. We can think, what does it mean to be intimate? What does it mean to be close to God? What does it mean to, to enter into God? What does it mean to have? Uh, what, what does it mean to become one with God, really? Mm -hmm. But if they, if 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 we're just on the platform of you know uh, debate, that's not going to help. If someone comes to you and says Jesus is the only way, well, you don't have much of a chance. You know, they're already, they're, you know, they're they're already not going to discuss with you. But you could still, even with them, you know, if you're clever, you could still. Uh, pose the right questions and, uh, and help them to understand at least some, some aspect of them. 
that the Aishwarya, the difference between Aishwarya and Madhurya, what is the, what is the, this is a very, this is probably the most important thing that we have to offer. Now what is the difference between Aishwarya and Madhurya? What does it mean that, that God is up there and he's a master, he's sending people to hell or to heaven? You know, that's a very distant thing. That's not very, that, that's not a very close thing to God. And like your father, you know, how many people, you, to have a, if you have a close relationship with your father, he's not always telling you, you know, ordering you around. He's always bossing you around if you have a close relationship with him. And then it becomes closer to a friendship. And the Aishwarya, the, 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 the weight of authority becomes loosened and you have a more intimate and friendly relationship, even if it's a relationship of father and son. All right, sorry for the preamble.